Hey everyone, this is Ellen March with Sulky of America, and this is our So What series. Oh, hey! <laughs> One of these days we won't have glitches, right? I love it. This is our So What series where we talk about what we're sewing. We want to connect one-on-one -on -one with you and give you some answers to some sewing questions you might have or any questions you might have about any sulky products that you've been using or that you want to use. And just all in all, have a great time. So this is our 20th episode. Can you believe it? We've done 20 of these so far. And if you haven't seen any of our So What's before, they are all saved on our YouTube channel. So you can go to um, our Sulky YouTube channel and watch all of them. Uh, but for today, stick with me on Facebook here because we've got a great giveaway today. Today, um, we're going to be talking about teddy bears and rainbows. You guys have probably seen teddy bears and rainbows popping up in your neighborhood, in people's front windows, in uh, car windows that are parked out front, things like that. And I thought we should give a little handmade spin to our teddy bears and rainbows. So first of all, comment and let me know, have you been seeing rainbows out and about when you're walking your dog or taking um, a bike ride or, you know, just getting out of your house and walking around in your neighborhood? Have you been seeing those teddy bears? Um, I think it's important we kind of talk about why those are existing. Obviously, we are all under our stay-at-home orders and abiding by those and kind of feeling a little isolated here in our homes. Um, really, no matter how many kids you have, how many family members you're staying with, there is still that feeling of isolation. That's another reason why I really want to make sure we're reaching out during this time and connecting with fellow sewists and quilters and crafters and seeing what we've been up to. Um, it's a great time to connect this way uh, while we're all on our computers and finding some great things to do. So, um, you know, this rainbow trend, I, it, from what I could tell, it began, it began in Europe. And people started putting rainbows, pictures of rainbows, uh, rainbow flags, quilts, that type of thing in their front windows to kind of show solidarity to um, the healthcare professionals. And it also became a sort of vision or icon of hope for children that were out walking with their families, walking with their parents, and they would notice these rainbows in the windows. And it just sort of caught on. And it came to the United States, and we've all been seeing them as uh, we walk around, at least where I live in Colorado. My kids all did a watercolor painting of a rainbow, and I'm going to show you this photo here. We actually did some chalk art of a huge rainbow. We actually used all of our chalk that day and did a huge, huge rainbow. Um, that is my twin girls right there. Very proud of their rainbow creation. And it's just a fun thing for the neighbors to come by and see. Um, you know, we did a scavenger hunt walk one day where we tallied how many rainbows we could see in the windows and in our friends' windows and took pictures. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a great little fun thing to do uh, for the kids. Also, just to show our support for everyone out there. So, First, let's talk about different kinds of rainbows, how we can bring our handmade prowess to this rainbow connection, if you will. In, uh, in Brooklyn, there's actually a, let me get this right, there's the Brooklyn's Quarantine Rainbow Connection, and it's like an I spy game. And you can Google this, and they've actually mapped out on a Google Maps app, uh, who's got rainbows, how many there are, and it's just a fun thing you could, you know, if you live in that area, you could print out your map and go around with your kids or even just yourself and look at all those rainbows. So for our rainbow connection, I thought, you know, we're a crafty bunch. 
why don't we put our sewing skills to the test and make some handmade rainbows? And we've got some great resources on the Sulky blog. Uh, we actually showed a, um, or we did a tutorial on a felt rainbow wreath of sorts. Now it's not technically a wreath, um, you know, it's not greenery. Um, it's a hoop art project. And there's a free template for the leaves. If you go on the blog post, we will put the link in the comments here. You basically cut out the leaves out of different rainbow colors of felt, and then you hand embroider them onto your backing fabric in different rainbow colors of sulky 12 weight thread. And then you can hang the hoop art on your front door and it's like a rainbow wreath. And let me see, I've got a picture of it here I can show you. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, it's so simple, but so effective. And it is easy enough to let the kids do as well. They can cut out all the leaves. You can teach them basic hand sewing skills because you're really just doing either a running stitch or a back stitch by hand to get the leaves onto your backing piece of felt. And if you happen to have, you don't have to use felt. You can use just a rainbow array of fabric scraps that you probably have in a bin somewhere. Get those out. Uh, you know, make your own wreath for your front door. It's just the cutest idea. I absolutely love that idea. Um, oops, my girls are still up there. <laughs> Another great idea. We have a color wheel kit and it has kind of the same sort of end result in that you're making hoop art. So your embroidery hoop is what you are going to use to display this project as well. This, the, the project is a hand embroidery sampler, but it's done in a rainbow of colors. And as you work your way around practicing stitches, you're actually creating a rainbow as well. So we have kitted this project and it comes with this really high quality German wooden embroidery hoop. Now we offer these hoops separately at sulky.com. And if you're into hand embroidery or if you've ever used a hand embroidery hoop in the past, they're usually these super cheapo, brittle um, hoops that don't really hold your fabric that taut. And they kind of can warp or just kind of um, just get destroyed over time. These German wooden embroidery hoops are super high quality. They don't cost that much more. They're still relatively inexpensive and they're going to last a long, long time. They keep your fabric nice and tight. So I highly recommend those hoops if you're going to go the wooden route. There are also, of course, plastic embroidery hoops. You know, those can do the job, but they're plastic. They don't hold the fabric as taut when you're working on something that's going to take you a while. Something like this sampler, you can see all these different stitches that you're learning and practicing on here. That can take you a while. Um, you might need to go back to it over the cor course of a couple of weeks. You want your hoop to be nice and taut throughout that whole process. So I highly recommend. And this kit, as you can see, it comes with a hoop. It comes with your backing fabric. And look at all those thread spools you get. We highly recommend that instead of using embroidery floss, which can, let's be honest, it can be super frustrating, especially for a beginner who is learning the mechanics of hand sewing, to separate all those strands of flosses, make sure they don't knot. You inevitably end up wasting so much just trying to get the strands apart and together for, you know, one pass through the needle. With sulky 12 weight cotton petites, it comes on a spool. One strand of this thread equals two strands of traditional embroidery floss. Most hand embroidery patterns call for two strands. So you would just use the one strand of sulky 12 weight, not have all those separating strands to deal with, and you're on your way. The other thing I love about working with thread on a spool is that not only can you use it for handwork, but then you can go put it on your sewing machine and use 
the rest of it for a different project by machine. As long as you're using a big enough needle that has a large enough eye to accommodate that thread so that it passes through without tangles or, you know, without friction, uh, you can sew with it. So highly recommend. And look at all those spools you're getting with this kit. You also get this little pattern uh, that has the instructions for how to create these stitches and these stitch combinations. So when you're done kind of displaying this in your front window as your rainbow, your crafty rainbow display, you can hang it in your sewing room and you always have a reference, you know, which stitch do I want to use for this part of this project? Oh, there's a lazy daisy and that's how I do it. So it kind of just, this kit serves a number of purposes. I think you guys will really enjoy it. So those are my ideas for some crafty kind of rainbows. Maybe you guys have some ideas too. Let me know in the comments. I'm seeing a lot of comments come by. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. If you have some other ideas for crafty rainbows that you can sew for, you know, the enjoyment of passersby, let us know in the comments. The more comments, the better. The other thing I want to talk about is teddy bears. So sort of after this rainbow movement started, this bear hunt movement started. And I was trying to get to the bottom of who kind of came up with this first, where did this start first? And from what I can tell, it started as a teddy bear hunt Facebook group, actually. And it was started by a 10 year old girl from Iowa. Now I was born in Iowa. This is near and dear to my heart. <laughs> oh, excuse me. She's 12, 12 year old Iowan. Her name's Tammy Buman. Buman. She thought it would be a good idea to put teddy bears in windows and have a bear hunt with her friends from school, with her sibling. And when they were out on walks, out on hikes, going through the neighborhood, they would track these bears. And so people, instead of, you know, it would either be really out there and obvious and in the front window, or it would be hidden in a bush, or it would be hidden in the car window. Or, you know, people started making it a little bit more difficult for the kids to find the bears as the days went on. And from what I can tell, there are about 10,000 people on this Facebook group and it's growing exponentially. So if you want to join that group, check it out. It's pretty amazing. Also, just join in the effort. If you have a teddy bear, go ahead and put it out somewhere. You never know who you are bringing joy to or how many smiles will be as a result of you just simply putting your teddy bear out. What I wanted to talk about is personalizing it a little bit. Let's give it a name. Let's give it a little note of encouragement. Let's dress it up a little bit. You know what I mean? We're crafty, right? We got to add our spin to it. Plus it gives our crafty hands something to do. Put a little, you know, bit of ourselves, of our craft into this teddy bear project. So actually at sulky.com, we've got what are called embroider buddies. They are little stuffed animals that you can actually embroider in a hoop in your embroidery machine. I know it sounds crazy. Now, I don't happen to have one of the bears with me right now. I'll sh go ahead and show one to you. And actually, dun da da dun, this is today's giveaway. Wait for it. That's right. That's right. This is today's giveaway. This is an embroider buddy bear. Okay. And uh, please forgive me. Put it in the comments. Um, this teddy bear, I believe, is called like the black bear or something similar. I apologize. I have forgotten his name. But you can take out his stuffing and fit him in an embroidery hoop. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But since it is today's giveaway, comment, let me know if you have embroidery capabilities, what you would put on your bear. Okay. And I'm going to choose a winner at random to get this embroider buddy. Now you can put a number of things on this little guy's tummy. Um, we have 
a really cute design called USA Strong, and we are actually providing that for free for everyone today. Uh, if you go on our blog post, which is in the comments, you can download our USA Strong design in the format of your choice. You can use it on your bear, you can use it on your flag, you can use it on your rainbow, you can just put it on your front door, whatever you want to do, wear it on a shirt, put it on a mask, USA Strong. Am I right? All right, so that is ultimately what our bear is going to look like. I also wanted to show you we have some other types of bears. This is another embroider buddy, and he's a blue little teddy bear guy. This one comes in a couple different colors. It comes in a light brown, it comes in the blue, the pink, and then I think one more color as well. So this one you can, um, you know, personalize boy girl if you want to do that, or you, you know, if you just like this style of teddy bear better, that is available too, and that's how it looks embroidered. So very, very cute. But again, today's giveaway, whoops, today's giveaway, uh, tell me what you would put on this guy's tummy and uh, you could win. So without further ado, I'm going to do a demo and show you how, in fact, you, excuse me, you can embroider this guy. Now, I happen to have a hedgehog. Uh, not only are there teddy bears, there are hedgehogs, there are dinosaurs, how cute, right? There are unicorns, okay? These are the three that I got for my kids because they are their favorite animals and um, I've actually had them for a little while now. Uh, I'm kind of waiting to have a reward, like let's say they get through homeschooling, um, and then we'll be personalizing them together as a family project. So it's the same exact principle, even though this isn't a bear, uh, you would be embroidering this belly. All right. So it's got a little zipper here and you take out both pieces. Okay. There's a body piece and then, oh, this one doesn't have two pieces. The bears have two pieces. The bears have a little a uh, little head uh, pillow and a body pillow. Take both of them out. So now, see how wide this opens up? Now you can fit a hoop in here. And let's not forget, we have to stabilize this little critter, all right? So what we want to use is Sulky Cutaway Plus Stabilizer, all right? We wanna cut away on the inside so that it remains with the stuffed animal for the rest of its life. When you go to wash this thing, because um, you will need to wash this thing, it will stay with those stitches and support them. So we're going to open up this thing of stabilizer. And you really, let me just tell you, you can only choose a design that's going to fit in a 4x4 or a 5x5 hoop. Anything bigger and your animal is not going to fit. If you have a circular hoop, you can fit it in... Um, the small or the next to smallest size. And I apologize, I don't know the diameter of that because I don't have that type of machine. But hopefully, hopefully if you do have that type of machine, you know what I'm talking about. So you'll get a piece of stabilizer that is big enough for your design and your hoop. And I'm going to use my trusty Husqvarna Viking Epic 2 machine and you'll cut your piece of stabilizer, making sure it's bigger than the hoop. And then we also need something to secure that stabilizer to the bear or the animal. So we need Sulky KK2000 Temporary Spray Adhesive. You're gonna spray your stabilizer and then adhere it to the wrong side of your teddy bear. So reach into the belly and put your stabilizer in there. Just going to spray a little bit and then we're going to get it into the guy. All right. Now we also need to mark the placement of our design. There is a upper and lower center seam. So um, along, here I'll show you. 
There's a little seam here that you can see. It's almost a pleat. And then there's a little seam here between the legs. You can use that to gauge your center point from top to bottom. But from left to right, you really need to measure and mark a little something something so that you can center your design because since this is so wonky, once you go to hoop it, there's going to be no way of telling if where your design should begin. So I thought I was going to pin mark it, but you know what? My pins are way over there and I'm trapped by all these cords. <laughs> so we're going to pretend I've done that, but I just want to make sure that you guys do that so that your design is straight along the belly because there's really nothing worse than doing all this work and then your design is slightly off. Am I right? So get your lower hoop ring into your little guy. And I'm so sorry, it's so difficult to show this on camera while I am doing it, but I'm gonna bring him up every step of the way so that you can see him. All right. Make sure that you have moved the back of your animal out of the hoop so that it doesn't get caught. And you're gonna have to be a little sort of persnickety about it. You know, it might take a few tries to hoop this little guy. Okay. Especially if you're doing it on a live video. <laughs> It'll definitely take a few tries. Okay. So bear with me here. Oh, bear with me. I knew it as soon as I said it. I'm actually thinking my hoop might be slightly too big for this hedgehog. But I'm going to see if I can get him in here. There are a lot of resources also on the Sulky site. So if you go to purchase this little guy, um, there is a video from the Embroider Buddy folks on the product page. And that shows you really, really well, like a bird's eye view over the top um, of how to hoop this guy. Because I am really struggling with my small workspace to get it done. And I actually think if I move my hoop sideways, I can get it in there better. So, again, bear with me, we'll get it done. The good thing about it is it is gonna be a very, very tight hooping. I also want to mention you have to make sure that you get a topper because anytime you are embroidering anything that is plush, you're going to need a topper. And I actually, I have to get a smaller hoop. That is, that's the deal. So hold please. I have a smaller hoop. And of course, it is way under. So you know what? I'm going to put up my cute picture of my bear <laughs> so that I can find my smaller hoop. and it was hanging behind me the whole time. You know, isn't that just, whoopsies. Can't stop showing you that picture of my girls. Okay, smaller hoop to the rescue. Bear with me, guys. I'm just gonna keep saying that. No pun intended, really, I promise. Okay, here we go. We have our cutaway stabilizer next to 
our little guy on the wrong side. And that KK2000 spray adhesive is critical uh, because as you can see, like moving this thing a bazillion times to hoop it, you want to make sure that your stabilizer is doing its job. Oh yes, way better. Here we go. Okay. I promise it's the home stretch and then I will show you all what's happening. Um, I would recommend not using like a heat removable marker on this guy for marking your embroidery placement. Instead, I would use like a piece of painter's tape, okay? And that way you can remove it totally and you don't have to worry about getting the mark off. If you go with a heat removable marker um, and then you go and try to iron that away, you could actually burn some of the fibers of your little critter. <laughs> I love it. Bring on the hedgehog puns, everybody. I love it. I, truth be told, I am actually getting this in the hoop. All right. Oh my gosh. Can we just, okay, can we just. That's right. <laughs> I finally did it. Oh goodness. Okay. So you can tell this is not very taut in the hoop. Look at what I've done there. Okay. So in this case, it is okay to go in and pull it a little totter. Now I know we are all taught in all of our embroidery classes that you never ever pull on the fabric, but I am pulling the fabric and stabilizer together to get it taut in the hoop. And you could just pretend that I have centered my design that I didn't really mark, right? All right, so topper, let's discuss. Um, a top, the topper I would use for this guy would be Sulky Salvi. All right. Salvi is, oh, here, let me show you. Here's how you move the guy away from the back of the hoop so you can get it on. So you can get it on and embroider it. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just moving it around too many times and I don't have enough space. That's what's going on. But I promise you, you can hoop this guy. You can do it. <laughs> All right, let's pretend the guy is hooped. Actually, I'm determined to do it one more time. Make sure you get his butt and his back out of the way. Okay, I'm not bothering with it. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the love. You know the struggle. The struggle is real. You guys can do it though. All right, sulky salvi. You have got to have a topper when you are embroidering on something plush, something with a nap, something that is furry or fuzzy. If you do not put a topper, your stitches are going to sink into the fabric and you won't be able to see them. When you have a topper, it allows the thread to sit on top of that topper surface and then when you go to wash it away the thread is still on top of the fibers so even if you were to brush to brush the fur around it you would still see that design and you can see here it's a little less plush on the belly which we would be embroidering but you still need that topper so cut away on the inside solve it topper on the outside. The Solvi is actually going to wash away completely when your design is finished, leaving no trace, no residue, no nothing. So choose a design that fits the little tummy. Make sure you have, you know, test out your hoop size. We learned that today. Make sure you've tested that out because if you've chosen a design that is too large, then you're going to have to go right back to the drawing board or to software in order to make it smaller so that it fits on the tummy of the bear. 
So, oh good. Cherry says, yes, I have done these before. It does take some work, but it's worth it. Okay, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> you believe me? Yes. Yes. Okay, I love it. Thanks, you guys. Again, I will be giving away this little guy. Uh, let me know what you would embroider on him. And if it is the Sulky USA Strong Design, that's okay. That's what it's there for. Um, I would love to see these guys popping up in your windows, in your car windows, it, hiding in your bushes, things like that. If you happen to make one of these Embroider Buddy teddy bears or other animals, send us pictures. Tag Sulky in your Facebook post so we can see them. Um, you know, let's have a bear hunt online and let's see what everybody does. Because, uh, you know, we've got to make lemons out of lemonade. Lemonade out of lemons. That's where I'm going with it. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to see if um, we've got any more questions that we need to ask or answer today. Um, you could put a thread in the four corners and pull them out after hooping. That's a great idea for placement. So if you put a little thread tail or a little thread knot that you can then clip out after placing your bear in the hoop, that's a great idea for a number of different projects, but especially these, these things that are difficult to hoop. Excellent. <laughs> All right. We've got some people from the UK. We've got some people from Canada. That's so nice. Um, someone's got a one-month-old granddaughter. Her name is Rosie. She would put, have a rosy day. That's so special. I love it so much. All right, so we've got a link for the design, link for the blog post. Make sure you check that out. Go and check out the Embroider Buddies. They're pretty affordable. And you know what? It doesn't have to be for a teddy bear that goes in your window. It can really just be to brighten somebody's day. Maybe you haven't been able to see your grandkids in the past month. You know, I know it's really difficult for my mom not to see my kids right now. And we're having tons of virtual play dates and, um, you know, we call them wave bys where, you know, we drive by and everybody waves from the car and, you know, it's, it's difficult and having a little embroider buddy, having a little special message on um, a teddy bear is a great, great thing to do and send to your loved ones that, um, you know, maybe you missed out, out on spring break together. And this is a great way to uh, just show them that you love them. So great projects all around. And I want to see those rainbows. I want to see those teddy bears. And I look forward to our next time together. Make sure um, that you like this page. Obviously, you already have. If you're getting notified of our Facebook Lives, you can ask to be notified every time that we go live so that you won't miss another of our live sessions. And also, if you have not signed up for our uh, newsletter, that is a great way to get firsthand knowledge of any great sales that we're doing, any new content, new videos that are going up. Um, it's just an all around great thing to do. So be sure to sign up for our newsletter um, and take advantage of that. So I will be seeing you guys next time. Thanks for all the comments and have a wonderful, wonderful day sewing up new and great creations.